After the recent mass shootings in El Paso, Dayton, and then Odessa and Midland, Texas, calls for gun reforms have been growing. They're coming from the public, from the business community, and from lawmakers. President Trump has said that he will unveil what he supports sometime this week. Recently, our William Brangham went to Odessa and Midland to see what gun owners themselves think ought to be done. William? That's right, Judy. While this debate unfolds here in Washington right now, we sought out gun owners and only gun owners to hear what their take is on what might be done to reduce gun violence in America. As you might imagine, many of them argued more Americans should be armed. But we also asked them, should we require universal background checks for all gun sales? Should we enact tougher red flag laws? Here is some of what we found. Just over two weeks ago, Dustin Fawcett was waiting in his truck outside this Starbucks in Odessa, Texas, with his three-week-old daughter. We were just sitting there jamming out to some music, and all of a sudden, I hear uh, a stream of, of gunshots, you know, pop, pop, pop. The shooter who killed seven and wounded 25 had just shot at several cars in the intersection right behind him. And I crawl in the back seat and check to make sure she's okay, still unsure if these are actually bullets. Uh, being shot. It was chaos. Fawcett and his family have long been hunters. While he's considered carrying a handgun, now he, like a lot of other Texans we met, will carry one. I mean, I felt helpless. I had a little daughter in the back seat, and I have no way. What, what if he would have came running up at me and I, I didn't have a weapon on me at the time? What would I have done? You know, you, you start thinking of that, and that's when you think, well, the only answer to that would be a firearm. After the tragedy, we see a response from the community. You know, there's sorrow, and we see a lot of people that are motivated anew. They want to do something about it. Tony Grijalva owns Family Armory in Midland, Texas, and he says he can barely keep up with the demand from people who want to carry a gun. Typically, he has about 25 clients in September for his license to carry class. Now, he's got over 175. What it boils down to is a feeling of powerlessness. Things are out of control, but action, just generally speaking, is better than inaction. We know gun sales often increase after mass shootings, and we saw that at this gun show in Hillsboro, Texas. Some people here told us no laws can stop mass shootings, but others were open to some changes some even supporting policies that are actively opposed by the NRA. No, there's got to be something done. There's got to be a happy medium. I don't think I've got any. I'm Dylan Hammonds is selling handguns and long guns today, including AR-15s, the gun used in many recent mass shootings, and one he thinks the media gets way too worked up about. He says there are plenty of similar guns just as lethal. but. Hammonds believes people should be required to prove they know how to safely handle and store a gun before they can buy one. Why wouldn't that work? It, it might not stop it, but we don't resist driver's license. They'll gladly go down and pay their money to get a driver's license so they can jump in the car and go to Walmart and buy beer. They have no issue with that. But as soon as you have to have a license to buy one of these, they don't want anything to do with it. I'm going to look at the serial number here. Karen Barlow and her husband Gary own a gun store in Wichita Falls, Texas. They believe guns are valuable for protection. In fact, Gary used his gun a few years ago to defend their store from two armed robbers. I carry a 38 Special Revolver. The Barlows are federally licensed gun dealers, so by law, they have to run background checks on every single buyer. But at gun shows like this, and in millions of private or online sales across the country, there's a loophole, and that check isn't required. The shooter in Odessa reportedly failed one of these checks in 2014 and then bought his AR-15 privately. In your store, because you're a federally licensed gun retailer, yes. you have to get background checks on everyone you sell a gun to. Exactly. But not every seller standing behind you right now has to do that. That's true. Do you think that ought to change? I do. Is that right? I mm -hmm. Why? I would like to see that loophole closed. Uh, so that's universal background checks? Universal. Uh, however, well, for private sales, if you're selling, if I'm selling a personal gun to my neighbor or to my nephew or something that, like, you don't have to do a background check. Honestly, it's, it's ludicrous. 
Others are more skeptical. Wallace Dunn is vice president of the Texas Handgun Association, a lifetime NRA member, and someone who thinks Democrats and the media use fear of mass shootings to push for gun control. We hear in the media all the time when there's a mass shooting. I liken it to airplane crashes. We hear airplane crashes, they're horrible. We don't hear about the million people that flew safely today. So you think we have an exaggerated fear about mass shootings? I do. Uh, if you look at it, it's horrible if it happens to you or your family, but the odds of being a victim of a mass shooting are probably pretty close to winning the lottery. It's, it's a, it's a, it happens and it's horrible, but, but as a percentage of the population, it's, it's not likely. At the Odessa Outdoor Gun Range, now I, never I met three more gun owners. They'd heard PBS was in town and they wanted to talk. They all support carrying guns for self-defense, but at times, some are also open to changes that are non-starters for the gun lobby. I think that the, the shooting two weeks ago or a week ago was uh, a tragedy, but uh, it's uh, something that's gonna happen as, as long as there are idiots allowed to get guns. Uh, they need to weed out the idiots and keep them from getting the guns and leave the rest of us to do what we want to do. But how do you weed out the idiots? Better and more stringent background checks. Uh, I would be willing to wait uh, a week, two weeks, to get a new gun if in the same venue in that week or two weeks they found out that there was somebody trying to get one that didn't need one. I think it's more of a mental health issue. I'm an NRA member, and I'm not against a background check at all. But I feel like our morals have changed so bad. So you think the problem that we have with violence is because morality has slipped, not because people are armed more or have access to guns more? Correct. What about this question of what are called these red flag laws, where if someone is worried about someone they know thinks they're on a downward spiral of some kind and alerts the authorities and that the authorities check that person out. And if they determine there's a problem, possibly take their guns for a period of time. I what have it? mixed feelings about that. We heard this from almost every gun owner we talked to in Texas. People think red flag laws won't help and they think people will abuse them by falsely reporting perfectly fine gun owners that they just don't like. There's enough gun laws on the books right now, if you enforce every single one of them like to the fullest extent of the law, that would slow things down a lot. We don't need new laws. We need enforcement of existing laws. Empathy to people too. I mean, I think you need to have empathy. I mean, just reaching out to your neighbors and your family. I mean, talking to people instead of just Facebooking and uh, talking about the left and the right. You know, reach out to your Democratic or Republican neighbor and say, hi, how are you doing? I would like everybody else in the nation would like to find the solution to stop all these rampages. That's the only reason I carry a gun anymore. Used to never have to worry about it. Contrary to popular lore, Texas isn't a particularly gun-heavy state. About a third of adults here own them, which is pretty close to the national average. And according to recent polls, a broad majority of Americans, Democrats, Republicans, and gun owners, support some increased action on gun control. Whether those majorities translate into political action remains to be seen. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm William Brangham in West Texas.